the Dorchester YMCA and the Strand Theatre in Boston in a workshop with George Conoff, produced these giant puppets. The arms are of heavy 10 or 12 gauge wire taped onto a center pole with duct tape. A loop in the bottom of the wire where it's taped makes it more stable and keeps it from simply slipping out of the tape. Four coat hangers will also work for this, although they're a bit short. The hands dance and move in various rhythmic motions as the puppeteer moves the stick up, up and down or twists it. The hands are cut out of a single sheet of cardboard and are attached to a loop of wire by a second piece of cardboard which is stapled and glued to the hand to form a sort of clamp. A crossbar is fixed into the head with screws and a tie to that and the chin allow the head to bounce around while keeping it stable on the upright pole. The cloth body is stapled or hot glued together rather than sewed. Separate sleeves are attached to the hands and to the center pole. A long piece of cloth attached to the bottom of the head falls in front of the center pole. And another somewhat longer piece of cloth is attached to the top of the head and falls behind the center pole. The front and the back piece of cloth are then attached to each other and to the sleeves. This kind of puppet is very easy to use as the puppeteer simply moves the central pole around in various rhythmic ways to make it dance. This mylar flyer is made in much the same way, except that the sheets of silver mylar that form the body are mounted not onto the head, but onto the coat hanger arms. Puppets can be even simpler than that. These dragons by Jackie Smith are just a head and some cloth on a pole, while this kid's dragon is just a head and some cloth and some kids. This Chinese-style dragon of Jackie Smith and this giant worm puppet both have bodies that are made out of long pieces of cloth lying over hoops that are made out of black plastic irrigation tubing which are fastened to sticks. The bodies of Joe Swanson's penguins are wide tubes of cloth hung from the head. They have lots of wire hoops in them to make them wiggle and the puppeteer just has to move the center pole. These Martians are made in somewhat the same way except that they have arms which are back weighted so that they move by themselves somewhat like those of this old brown cat. If you want to build puppets that are taller than about 15 feet, you can't use either backpacks or simply a person holding the pole because the balance will become impossible. This 18-foot floor is a very simple form. A solid shoulder piece is attached to stiff wooden arms, which move around to help to balance the center pole. This big summer has a somewhat more elaborate structure. A tripod on wheels concealed in the hoop skirt carries both the weight and the balance of the center pole, which is attached loosely by ropes to the top and bottom of the tripod. Since the arms and shoulders aren't needed to balance the center pole, they don't need to be stiff, but can move freely. This gives it a very lifelike motion. This African king made by the Dorchester YMCA is on a simple teepee-like tripod. Two projections form the shoulders and a longer stick holds the head. The frame was put together with duct tape and clothesline, but it needs good strong wood. Practice is important in making your puppets move and look right. So is dancing, chanting, and music. Good luck. Let me know what happens. Go, 
If you've made a puppy you like and are willing to send me pictures, or if you're having technical difficulties, write me at Sarah Petey, 20 Grove Street, Boston, Massachusetts, 02114, or Google Puppeteers Cooperative on the web to find our web pages and email.